So, um, life is a little bit rough for the people of God who is genuine about their relationship and understand with God and understand that there's supposed to be a separation between us and the rest of the world. So that the scripture says, Jesus is saying, will he find faith when he returns to the earth? And that deception was going to be an indicator that he would be coming back for his people soon, or be an indication of, of us being in the last days. And to me, each day it seems, deception and confusion gets even greater and struggles. People are struggling with issues that they don't understand how to deal with and people are confused about how to interpret the scriptures and who to listen to for, for better understanding and realizing that a lot of the people who we all have honored and, and, and endeared and listened to has given us the truth we've come to an understanding that a lot of those people are not genuine believers in the Messiah and in the Most High God. And so coming to that understanding and you know, realizing that you've been deceived and now you're trying to reestablish a foundation and while you're trying to reestablish a foundation you realize that a lot of what was being taught was not the truth. And so now you're trying to really hold on tightly as much as you can, stay standing um, while you try to discern or understanding, uh, understand what is the truth, what is right, what, you know, how to live holy and how to, like, let me give you an example. I got a comment, a lot of my messages are inspired by comments from people of a lady asking, is it wrong for her to ask God for healing? Because part of the prosperity message was everybody is supposed to be healed. And I was going to start in Job, but I guess I'll start in 3rd John and see how the Holy Spirit leads. Because not everybody is going to be healed. And not all of our prayers are going to be answered with yes. Sometimes God says no. And sometimes God says wait. And sometimes he says yes, but we don't know which times it's going to be which because sometimes the things that we ask for, if he was to give it to us, it would harm us or it would, it would destroy us or it would keep us from re reaching the destiny and purpose that God has for our life for the future because we don't know what the future is. We don't know when he saved us what specifically he saved us for which helps to illuminate the error in the teaching that we are gods and that we can call forth whatever we want because we might call forth something that might interfere with the plan of God for the future because we are not gods, we can't see the future. Am I making sense? You understand what I'm saying? In 3 John, verse 1, this is a letter that was written to a specific person and it's a reading and the word of faith, prosperity people have used this greeting to make it be something that is for everybody. It says, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved Gaius, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. It just be, it's a greeting like you would say, I wish, I pray all is well with you. It doesn't mean everybody is going to prosper and everybody is going to be healthy. You know, it's, we bought into this though, doctrine. And we went around telling people, God wished for you to be well and you to be healthy and prosperous. But this scripture doesn't say this. This is to a specific person and it was a greeting. It's just foolishness. So now I want to turn to the first chapter of Job. And I also got a comment from a person who has issues with my tone. <laughs> I, I, I was accused of yelling and repelling people. You know, it's like, it's my personality. And, and most of you who 
I, I'm positive the people who's in our ministry, you are familiar with me. When I get excited or when I get really into explaining something, I, I, my voice elevates. But I'm not angry and I'm not intending to, on purpose to scream at anyone. So if anyone is taking offense to my tone and the way I speak, I can't really apologize for it because that's who I am. And I can't change me as who God has made me to be. And I'm at peace with that. So I'm trying my best to explain the scriptures as best I understand it because I'm in the same boat with everyone else of trying to reestablish my foundation because I've come to the understanding that most of what I was taught, even in seminary and school, was, was error. Okay? So in Job chapter 1, and let's look at verse 6. It says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job. That there is none. I want to emphasize the Lord is speaking here now. He's saying about Job that there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and an upright man. One who fears God, have reverence for God, and eschews or shuns evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job reverence or fear God for naught? Has not thou made, underline, has not Satan recognized that God had made a hedge about Job and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. So but put forth thine hand now and touch all. Now God is telling, telling Satan after he done recognized. Satan recognized that he couldn't touch Job. Or Job's, hand, or Job's family or anything that had to do with Job. So now verse 11 God is saying put forth thine hand now. And touch all that he has. And he will, no, I'm sorry, Job is still, Satan is still speaking. And he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. See, he had to get permission. Only upon himself, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only am escaped alone. And if you read on, it, it tells how the enemy was able to affect everything that Job had, including his physical body, but Job did not curse God. He, Job is an example. The key point I wanted to make here in these verses of scriptures is that Job had a hedge of protection around him. And Satan knew he had the hedge of protection around him. Also, Job did not sin. Job didn't do anything wrong according to what it says in verse Seven. It says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then answered the Lord and said, Going, I'm sorry, then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant? Job is considered my servant, that there is none like him in the earth. None like him in the earth. He's perfect and upright and he shuns evil and he has reverence or respect for God. So there's nothing anybody can say about Job that 
all the things happened because Job was prideful. Some of these things people say because here God is saying Job was perfect. Job didn't do anything wrong. He shunned evil. So sometimes difficult things happen in our lives, but we don't understand why they happen or what's going on why they happen, what's going on in the spiritual realm, why the Lord is it might feel at times that the, that the Lord has forsaken us or that he's taken his hands from around us. You know, sickness, adversity, the fiery darts of the enemy. But that's why God tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. Because there's a reason why God allows everything to take place. And Satan is not more powerful than God because Job had a hedge around him and Satan recognized that hedge and he understood his spiritual boundary. He could not overpass it. So when things, if we're in Christ, if we're in the Messiah, if we're walking according to the Most High and difficult hard times or bad health or whatever difficult situation comes upon our lives, it does not mean that we have sinned or that we've done something wrong or that our past is now catching up to us. We have no idea of all the spiritual things that's taking place in the spiritual realm that is causing our circumstances to be whatever we find them from day to day. Am I making sense to you? Because in Hebrews we read last week where it says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He's the same holy God. He's the same sovereign God. He's the judge. He's righteous. And he knows what he's doing. And Satan is no more powerful than our Lord is. Am I making sense to you so far? Let's go to Psalms 34. And we're going to read that whole song. It's good to, to get back into the, to the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament was written for our example. So we can learn from what the other people went through. And we can either draw comfort or strength from, from how God dealt with them. But it's not a, a recipe that he's going to be exactly the same with this person as he was with the next person. That's why it's foolish to say, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health and take that to say everybody is supposed to prosper and be in health because sometimes your sickness or your afflictions, how you go through it, brings strength and comfort to the people who are watching you going through it. And that's a way that God is able to use us in the earth. We don't get to say how the redeemed is used by God. If we genuinely commit it to Christ, then we have to yield to him and lean on him to help us to make it through day by day, whatever afflictions, whatever trials or tribulations or persecutions that we find ourselves faced with from day to day. All right? Psalms 34. This is the Psalm of David. And he's saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and you got to always believe, he heard me and delivered me from all my Fears. Even David had fears, and he's the one who slew Goliath, which who was a giant, and he killed a bear and a lion. Okay? They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, cried, he cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste. This is, we got to taste the word of God and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that, underline, blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear, have reverence the Lord, you his saints, 
for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord, seek the Lord shall not want any good thing, good thing, not, not worldly thing, but good thing, because if you're in Christ, you're going to want the things that he wants. Come, you children, listen, hearken, listen unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that, divide, that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil. This is what we are in the opposite now is taking place instead of us departing from evil we are embracing evil and do good seek peace pursue it the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous his eyes is on his eyes is on the righteous and we've been made righteous by believing in his Messiah his son okay and his ears are open unto the righteous cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears. He hears your cry. He sees your cry. He sees your broken heart. And he delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh or near unto them that are of a broken heart. When your heart is broken, he is near you. That's when he's the closest to you. He hears your cry because when your heart is broken, that's the time, that's the only time mostly a person is really going to cry out to the Lord. That's the time you really get to know that he's real because he is able to walk you through something that you're not able to walk yourself through. And he saves such as be of a contrite spirit. This is what I wanted you to get to, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Because you're living in a dark world. You're living in an evil world. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, the Lord delivers him out of them all. He delivers you out of them all. But you have to go through. Because it's going through and having a broken heart and him taking you through that you become acquainted with him. That you get to know him. You get to know him in a way that people who are not going through stuff will never ever get to know him. So if everything was you were on the mountaintop and everything is that you are rich and you're in good health and there's no problems in your life, you will never ever get to know the goodness of the, of the Lord. Your flesh will never be crucified and you will never get to see the greatness of God, the glory of God, the majesty of God because it's when you're going through and your heart is broken and all you want to do is cry and you feel pain and you feel sad and you feel loneliness and you feel forsaken that's the time that you really get to know that there really is a God and I'm telling you all this from, from my own personal experiences when you get down on your knees and you get down on your face and your heart is broken and you don't know how you're going to make it and the tears is running down your face and your body is aching and you feel sad and you feel alone and you feel forsaken and you feel hated and persecuted. That's the time that you draw close to your creator God and he will take you by the hands. And your spirit will become sensitive to his spirit. And he'll speak to your heart through his scriptures. And he'll help you get through day by day by day. And you don't even know how he's taking you through. But when you get to the other side of whatever it is you're going through, you want to know God in a way that you could never have known him any other way. Am I making sense to you? So don't feel... Or don't listen and believe the lies of the enemy that you're not going to make it through. That your sin is catching up with you. That God doesn't care about you anymore. That you're on your own. You might as well curse God and die. Don't do that. That's the time that God is molding you and shaping you 
and preparing you for the things that he has for your future. Because if you haven't gone through anything, you're not going to be able to help anyone else go through whatever it is other people are going through. Do you understand? School, seminarians, they don't help you to help somebody like suffering, afflictions, and persecution does. Because when you have gone through it yourself, you understand what another person feels like when they are going through it. That's the only way you can get it. That's the only way you can know it. Now I want to turn to 1 Corinthians 15. And then we come back to the Psalms. I'm sorry, I want to go to Romans 15. Romans 15. Look at verse 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the, the scriptures should bring you comfort and give you hope. Isn't that awesome? To me, that's really, really awesome. We see people going through stuff. We see the people who are rich. And on the surface, you think having money is the answer to everything. But it's not. It's deception. It's better to go through the persecutions and the afflictions and get to know God than to be rich and never know God. Because like the scripture says, what does a prophet a man, and I can't seem to get away from this theme, to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Because when you're rich and you have all your needs met, you don't see a need for a savior or a creator. Because the enemy has you through pride thinking you are God because money in this world system is power. Do you understand what I'm saying? So don't be grudge or don't look at the other people and say that because they are rich and you are poor, they are better off than you because eternity is a long time compared to this, this small time frame here. Am I making sense? All right, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15. God hasn't forsaken us. God hasn't forsaken his people. No matter what it looks like. All the deception and the confusion and the darkness. The Lord has not forsaken us. Chapter 15, verse 57. It says, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory. In every circumstance, we have victory. Therefore, my beloved brethren, this is what I want you to see. Be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Turn now back to Psalms 1. Let's look, let's start at verse 1. Psalms 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands 
in the way of sinners. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but in his delight, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. There's everybody got their own season in God. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly, underline, the way of the ungodly shall perish. It's going to perish. It's not going to stand. The enemy is going to use people and then they're going to perish. Ungodliness does not prosper. Turn to Psalms 37. All of the wickedness that's in the earth is just really bad. <laughs> Look at verse 1. It says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou, underline, envious <laughs> against the workers of iniquity. Some people say, I can never win. <laughs> no matter what I do, seem like the, the evil people prosper and I don't. The scripture says, Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. No matter what is going on around you, you stay faithful, you stay committed, you stay steadfast. So shall thou dwell in the land, and truly thou shalt be fed. Delight, make it a practice of delighting thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself anywise to do evil. Is this making sense? Turn to Romans 12. A lot of us are hurting. A lot of us are confused. And a lot of people are being deceived. And a lot of people are being tormented spiritually. And a lot of people have can have have given in to wanting to do evil, witchcraft, sorcery, just being mean for no reason because they have become hosts for evil spirits. We don't have to revenge ourselves. No matter what's going on, we, we stay grounded, we stay rooted and committed to the things of God. Turn the other cheek. You know, pray for wisdom and discernment. Rest in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. 
Get in the word. Let the scriptures bring you peace. Brings you comfort. It ministers to you. It helps you to be strong. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word helps you to calm you down. Help you to not be afraid. Helps you not to be anxious. Am I making sense? All right. In Romans 12, look at verse 10. It says, Be kindly affectionate, affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not preferring the people of the world and being like the world, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing, instant, underline, continuing instant in prayer. You got to always be praying. Distri distributing to the necessity of saints, giving it to hospitality. Be hospitable to people. This is how people will know a difference between us and the people of the world. Bless them which persecute you. Pray for them who persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, you know, but con condescend to men of low estate. Walk in humility, not prideful, not puffed up and, and, and honor the people who, who are rich, basically. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest. Be honest in the sight of all men. People need to practice being honest and not being deceptive and, and lying because deception is so strong in the earth because most people are operating in deception. Most people have a mask on. People are not real. People are not genuine. If possible, if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge, underline, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. This is what we have to practice. This really is spiritual warfare. The scripture says, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Pray for those who come against you. Pray for their souls to be saved. Pray for God to touch their hearts that they can see the error of their ways. Do you understand what I'm saying? Turn to Philippians. Chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Your suffering, your tribulation, your sadness, your loneliness, your, your health, all of those things is at work in you to make you a better person in Christ Jesus. It makes you equipped and prepared to help someone else. Do you understand? All right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5 says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful or anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And, and, and God is going to answer all your prayers. And God is going to give you everything you ask Him for. Did it say that? It says, make your request, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, God's peace, after you've given it to God, 
however we God discern, determine he's going to work it out, you trust him. So his peace comes upon you, which passes all understanding. And his peace shall keep your hearts and minds so you don't go crazy and lose heart while you're going through the tribulations, the persecutions, and afflictions because you have to tell yourself, I've already given it to God and he's going to work it out and he's going to help me to make it through and I'm not going to lose my mind because he's not giving me a spirit of fear but he's giving me power, love, and a sound mind and I am going to make it through. I am going to be victorious. However way I come out on the other side, my God is in control of my life. And I'm not supposed to be anxious or worried. And I'm going through whatever I'm going through. It's helping to mold me and shape me into who God needs me to be to carry out my assignment in the earth because I am the workmanship of his hands created unto good works unto Christ Jesus. <laughs> Does this make sense to you what I'm saying to you? Every day is not going to be happy. Every day is not going to be an easy day. Every day I'm not going to be healthy. I, I wish I be. I wish to be healthy, but if I'm healthy or not, I'm gonna keep standing. If I'm sad or not, I'm gonna keep standing. If I'm crying, I'm gonna keep standing for the word of God. That's what it means to be a believer: is that I trust my God. That. Whether our hedges around me or not, he is still in control of my life. And other people will look at you going through whatever you're going through that you can still laugh at times. You can stay strong. You're not wavering. You're not going to and fro or being tossed to or fro. But you're staying steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. You know? That's what it means. That's what faith is for. That's what Jesus came for, to give us eternal life and to redeem us. He paid for us with his blood so he can use us wherever he chooses to in whatever way he chooses to, and that should be okay with us. And if you're having a difficult time, Lord, help me, please, to make it through. Help me, Father, to stand. I don't understand this, but help me not to faint. Help me not to quit. Help me not to lose heart. Help me not to be anxious, Father. Help me not to, to be afraid. I'm afraid, Lord. Help me with my unbelief. I believe, Lord. Help me with my unbelief. Whatever you need, whatever you're going through, Lord, help me. Make your request known so God can help you give you peace of mind through, through the trials and the tribulations and the storms. Because storms comes to everyone. Persecution and afflictions comes to everyone. But if you're in Christ, you have something to anchor you to help you to make it through. And it's His Word. Faith, hope, patience, trust in His Word that He has not forsaken because He's you. Because He said He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And God is not a man that He should lie. He, he, he never lies. He keeps his word, and that's what we have to count on, okay?